Hello everyone. Good to see you again. I am teaching a rock painting class here at the Los Gatos Library. We're going to be doing rainbow mandalas today. And so you see before you several different things that I've painted. Um, I'm going to be painting a rock like this one and I just wanted to show you a few samples. You can see depending on whether you put your dark colors in the middle or your light colors in the middle, it can give a very different look to the total picture. And so I've decided I'm going to do the dark in the middle one and end with the bright colors because if I go beyond the black circle that's painted on the rock, I think it'll show up on the natural rock more than the dark color will. Um, you may have picked up a rock like this from the library. If you don't if you didn't get a chance to do that, you can find a rock in your own landscape or you can go to the rock yard and buy one. That's what I do. And I like to leave some of the rock natural to see where it started from, but I like to put black under the colors because they really pop on the black. Sometimes when you paint on the natural color, you don't see the colors of your paint as much. This is a rock that I did several years ago when I started and as you can see when we start coming out to the natural rock the colors are very different looking than they are with the black behind them. The black almost makes an outline. So that's why I do that. It's also okay to paint different color backgrounds and paint on that. Uh, this little rainbow has a black background but this one has a dark blue background. So it is fun later on if you want to practice and try different things, do that. I also, you know, you can paint on canvases, small or large. You can paint on wood cutouts. Maybe you'd like to think of some holiday presents. Little tiny rocks are, are really fun to paint on. Uh, Christmas ornaments. You might decide you want to paint some Christmas ornaments. Once you understand the idea of doing a mandala, then you can apply it to any, almost anything. I did Easter eggs, and that was a different version of a rainbow. So be creative and look around you and see what comes up and what you can paint. You'll find that you'll want to paint everything. So some things that you're going to need. Oh, and I forgot to mention this is actually an old CD and I thought it would be fun to even paint on this side as well and then hang it out in the garden and let it twirl around and catch the light. Maybe hang some beads from it, have it be a wind catcher. So there are a lot of things that you can do with your painting. But I think this is what I'm going to do. But if you don't have a rock, feel free to paint on what you do have. What we're going to do first is look at the tools and do some practice dots. So what I'm going to have you do is get that black paper I was talking about. Or maybe you have a black paper plate. I suggest black because if you're using black for the background of your rock, then you want to practice with a black piece of paper so that you know what the colors are going to look like. And then we're going to be doing something like this where we are taking our tools and making different sizes of dots so we know what size each tool will make because we just choose different sizes of tools to get our mandala design. And depending on what size tool you use, that's how you get different size circles. A mandala is a circle. It's based on the Sanskrit word, and it can uh, has a lot of spiritual symbolism in, in many religions. Um, basically, it symbolizes the universe that starts as a small dot and then just expands forever. So it's a meditative process to paint one. It's, it's very calming and soothing. So what I'm uh, going to use today are tools that are things that you can find at home and that I have made ahead of time and you may have gotten a list and um, I just now made some new tools using cotton swabs. This one I 
put white paint on the cotton part and I'm waiting for it to dry so that it'll be hard and the fibers don't come off. This end I took all the cotton off and put a little paint on it to seal it because this is just a cardboard tube. And what you are looking for is a flat edge. And this one, I took some of the cotton off so that it's a little bit smaller than the end that has all the cotton and I'm hoping it will give me a different size dot. And then the pencil, we'll use the sharpened end for this size dot and use the eraser end for a dot that will be as big as the eraser. Um, a toothpick, toothpick will make a nice tiny little dot. Um, this one has a flat end so I can use that end for a little bit larger size dot. Um, I even tried a paper clip that made a a dot a little bigger than the toothpick. Just see what you have at home. Maybe you have a paintbrush. Maybe you are painting a black background on your own rock or maybe you are taking a canvas and painting it black first and so you have a paintbrush. The other end is round and it will make a dot if you dip it in the paint. I like to paint out of these little paint pots because I can open them, I can put my tool in, and then I can close it and the paint won't dry out. My favorite paints to use are Americana, Deco Art Americana, and it has the right consistency for almost any surface. It's acrylic paint. Just be sure you don't get it on your clothes because it doesn't want to come out. That's my favorite. This apple barrel can be found at Walmart. It's probably the cheapest. Um, I like the gloss because it's a little bit thicker than the regular paints. There's nothing wrong with the paint other than it might be a little too thin and drip off the sides of your rock or another surface. I like folk art paint, but folk art sometimes is a little too thick. Let's see, I don't know if that's glaring too much for you to read it. This particular one is a uh, uh, they call it pearl, so it's a little bit, a little bit shiny, as you can see. Really fun to put metallic paints on the very top when you're almost done. Put little dots on top of the first dots. We call that top dots. That makes it really pretty. All right, so sometimes if you go online and look on YouTube videos, you'll see a lot of people using nail styluses. This one came from the dollar store. That's a pretty good deal. They have a rounded ball on each end, a small one and a big one. And so what we do with this is we walk the dots. So let's try some of these tools. Um, if you don't have one, how about if you make one using a little pin, put it in a cork or put it in a, another pencil eraser and then you can use the rounded end of that to make the dots. Um, another couple of things that might be good for a bigger size, a glue stick and a, a, one of these little foam paint brushes, the handle. As you can see, those are just a little bit different in size. The glue stick's just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to use the basic ones I'm pretty sure everybody has. I made up these little paint pots of rainbow colors. I don't know how well it shows in the camera. I bought these at the Dollar Tree and I believe that they're acrylic paint, but I wasn't sure. But that's an economical way to get a lot of paints and not pay very much money. And Michaels has packages of paint like this that are also in pots, but I found I couldn't get everything I needed for a rainbow. Maybe this one. This one might have it because you have your purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So with one of these you could do the rainbow and it gives you some extra colors as well. And if you like to mix your own colors you can get little um, palettes that are, you can get, I, I don't know, six maybe for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. So, but I have my paints already mixed up. I have rainbow colors and then I, I made also some see if I turn it this way you can kind of see I have the darker version and then a lighter version it seems like um, so then you can see let's turn this down a little bit and then maybe the colors will be more true 
So you can see I have the bright version and then a more pastel version. And so what I like to do is do a series of dots and then come back later and put dots on top to give them some depth. And that's what I did on this rock. All right. So first we're going to take our paints and you can choose any color. I'm going to choose yellow, well, because it will show up on the black the best. Or white would also. Oh, and and uh, you need either a paper towel or a cloth to wipe your tool with. So when you're done dotting, say you're making these dots, you just wipe the paint off. I like the cloths because I think they look pretty afterwards. And let's see, another thing that is, is kind of a fun trick is say you have paint bottles. So, and you don't have paint pots, you can just open the, the paint, just be careful, and then you can take your paint right out of the cap. So I'm going to dip my pencil eraser in the paint, and you want to make sure you cover the end, and it's good to have a little bead, like a drop. And then we're going to put that on the paper. Let's see. If if I can show you what I'm doing if I tip it a little. I'm going to have it perpendicular to the paper and I'm going to push down but I'm not going to squish too much because I want to leave a bead. I don't want I don't want to push too hard like that and end up with a dot like that. That's not what we want. We want the bead. So if I go ahead and get a little bit more paint and you can kind of see it, it, it makes a little bead it's hanging off. I want that in the middle of the pencil if possible. And then I just gently transfer the paint to the paper. Let's see if you can see this. Just, I, I, it has to be enough to make the full circle. And it's okay to you know, go over it again, but you need to get more paint. And you only make one dot at a time. So you dip and dot, you dip and dot. And that's what size the pencil eraser will make. So I'm going to wipe that paint off. And I think I'll go to the yellow. I'm going to put my white back on. I'm just going to try the yellow. And I'm going to dip my pencil in it and cover the tip. And I'm going to, that's what size that makes. Now the fun, and, and if I dip and dot every time, it will be the same size. And as you know, it will get a little bit more paint. So sometimes this dot will be a little bigger than this one. I might go back. But as you can see, that just made it a lot bigger. The nice thing about pointed things or rounded tools is you can dot one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, until it runs out. You don't want to go too far because you still want some, so you still want them to look round. Maybe you can only do it three times or four times. But you can do that with the tip of the pencil because it's rounded. You can do that with a stylus, which is really nice. If I take my paintbrush handle, it's going to be a different size. It's quite a bit bigger. So I can just, I can just dip and dot, and they'll be the same the whole time, or pretty much the same. Or I can dip one time, dot, 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 dot. OK? So you want to experiment with all of your tools and find out what size they are. And I just saw this on, on uh, let's see, where do I have it? I saw an artist take one of these white erasers and dip it in the paint and put it down and you've got an oblong. So this would be really cool to, to use to, to make a design. I think it obviously could make a flower. And you, I'm dipping and dotting every time and I'm trying not to touch the other colors with it. Now you'll find also with paper it moves, it sticks to your tool. Your rock isn't going to do that, but your rock might roll. So <laughs> be careful of that. 
And now this eraser isn't good for anything but painting because it's not going to erase anymore, but that's okay. And then the tools that I made, see I'm not sure if they're dry yet, but I have the other ones I made. So this one, let's see, this one has all the cotton on it and the paint has dried. So it makes a, a dot that size and it will also walk the dots. And I'm going to wipe that off. That has all the cotton on it still. This end has no cotton on it, so it makes a dot this big, but it seems like I can walk it pretty well. It's a little bit smaller than this one. That's with no cotton. And then this tool, I took some of the cotton off, but not all of it. So it, but it looks like it's the same size as the other one. But because these are round, I can walk the dots. The fun thing about walking the dots is going around another circle. So I'll show you with the toothpick. And we'll go around this first circle that we made. And we, we'll start at the top and we'll just keep going around until we run out of paint and then we're going to go around the other way. I'm going to do that first dot and then I'm going to keep going around and they're going to get smaller. And so that's walking the dots around the dot like I've done here. And then I'll, I'll wipe it. And it's you want to check your tools and wipe them every so often so they don't get too much paint on them. You want to be very careful when you go to wipe the Q-tip because even though it has paint on it, you're putting it back in paint and so it's maybe going to get soft again. So you have to be careful. You don't want to ruin those tools. If I am doing this, if I bought crochet hooks. They're by Crystal Light, I think Co maybe Coates and Clark, I forget. And they have really nice flat round surfaces and they're plastic so they don't wear out like, like wood does. And I just got them at Joanne Fabrics. You can also order all kinds of tools online. It's a good idea to have a little paintbrush on hand. If you make a mistake and you want to wash it off, you can you can use a paintbrush or you can use another Q-tip. It's just a little bit fatter. So I'm going to start in with the rock now. And I was going to say, if you are preparing your own rock, I cut, I took this can this very can. I put it on a piece of paper and made and cut out a circle. That's what I used to, to draw on the rock to make my circle. Then I cut out a piece of paper the same size. I like to use this white charcoal pencil, but there are other kinds of colored, I mean uh, like a white Crayola colored pencil might be better. And then I need to find the center of my circle here. So I'm going to put this on and you see it's folded. And the way I did it was I traced out a circle, then I folded it in half and folded it in half again and cut out the little tip so that when I open it, it's a little dot in the middle and that is the center of the circle. And my main folds also can give me a little direction so when I make my mandala, I also can put some marks over here to kind of be a little bit of a guideline to, sh just to help me know if I'm keeping my lines straight. So what we're going to be doing is, so now I have my circle with the center and I'm going to put a white dot there with my biggest tool, which is my pencil. And if you had the glue stick, you could make a bigger circle or even the handle of a paintbrush, you could get a bigger circle. But assuming that you don't, I'm going to use the pencil. And actually, I think I better put, I better put the rock on something so I don't get paint on the table. So we're going to use the white paint I'll shake it up again, make sure that there's a little bit of paint in the cap. And I will take the pencil and make sure I get enough paint on it. 
and I'll do my best to put that circle or my pencil on the center of that dot. Doesn't have to be perfect, you just want it to be close. I won't press too hard because I don't want it to squish out. Now remember, you're, if you're painting on a rock, the rock is not perfect. It's got all kinds of bumps and all kinds of imperfections and that's okay. This is artwork. It's, we're not machines and we don't need it to be perfect. We want it to be handmade. All right, so I've got a center circle of white and what I need to do is have it be, have put the little white dots around it. So I'm going to use the other end of the pencil. Let's just try that. So you're going to dip it in the white and we're going to, we do have some marks from using that paper, but it's also like thinking of a clock. We have 12. I'm going to dip it again because I want these to all be the same size. We have six. We have three and we have nine. I'm making it close, but I'm not touching the white. So this is where it's hard not to be a perfectionist because I want that to be a little bit bigger so it looks like the other ones. But I also have holes in the rock right there and so it's not gonna be perfect. And I, I have to tell myself the same thing. Now, I think I can put two more dots here. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Um, you could possibly put three, and if you put three in between, your design is gonna look different than if you put two. If you put one in between, your design is going to look different than if you put two or three. Let's count this one with my toothpick. So we have the, the cross is here. So we have one, two, three, four, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So in between those, I think I have three. So already my design is going to be different than this one because I'm not going to try to crowd too many dots in there. So this, if, if well actually I think what I will do to make it easier, I'm going to put one dot because I think it'll be easier for everyone not knowing how big your pencil is and I'm just gonna go ahead and leave the space there and not worry about not worry about it. And so I just made an executive decision. Now you could come in with your toothpick pick and put tiny little ones in there. And I might do that after it dries a little bit. The next row I'm going to do is going to be purple. And so I'm going to start my rainbow with the purple inside. And these are my rainbow colors. And your rainbow colors might look a little different, but that's okay. I'm going to use the same size. Actually, I'm going to take my Q-tip that I took the cotton off of and just see if that's any bigger. It might be bigger, it might not be. And I'm gonna dip it in the purple and I'm going to put a dot in between the two white ones, but I'm not gonna to touch the white. And then, because I'm gonna be thinking about going across and matching it up, I'm gonna turn my rock around and I'm gonna do the other one. So now I've done, this is almost like doing the clock because now I have the 12 and the six. Some people say north, south, east, west. Now I'm gonna do the other ones that are directly opposite each other. And I'm going to try to keep them making a line that goes straight across. And so you can see those match up pretty well. And I will go ahead and put another one in between those. So I'm nestling it close to the white, but not touching it. And you can see I'm kind of tapping a little bit, making sure that the paint comes off. And I can see that these are not necessarily the same size. This one is bigger. And I'm gonna make these just a little bit bigger with 
by adding just a little bit more paint to the dot before it dries. When it starts to dry, it gets a little bit of a skin on it, and then you might end up having it be too sticky. So I do it right away. Okay, so there's a nice row of purple. One thing that you, you'll learn as you paint is how how many dots can you put in before you run out of your black or your rock itself because I went down the sides of the rock. So I had done two rows of purple because they were so little I wanted them to show and right, and so I'm actually with three rows if I want to count this teeny tiny one and then the next row and the next row and then I put a little bit of lavender in there to brighten it. So um, I, so because I need purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red before I run out of rock. But I really like the purple, so I, I do want to do another row. And so I'm going to try the pencil. It's going to be about the same size, but I think it'll be okay. And so I'm going to go and do my cross. It looks like it's just a little bit smaller, so I'm going to go across and do the dot. And again, I'm nestling it. I'm not touching, but I want to keep it close. And then I'll go across and do this one. So these two go across and these two go across. And I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. The first dot might be smaller because it doesn't have as much paint on the pencil yet. And then I'll do this one. And then the one across the way is over here. And be sure that if, if it makes it easier for you, turn your piece so that you can see what you're doing. It usually works best for me, because I'm right-handed, to work on the right side of the rock instead of reaching over, because then my hand's in the way I can't see what I'm doing. All right, so that looks like that'll be enough purple. I'm going to wipe off my pencil. And I just love how the, the rag looks. It looks so colorful. OK, so let's do blue. So now I can close up my purple, and it won't dry out and use my blue. My blue is a little on the dark side. Your blue could be lighter or, or not as, as dark. Let's see. Um, I'm going to try. I'll try this middle size Q-tip. Remember we had a full size cotton, no cotton, and a little bit of cotton. And these were prepped with some paint and then I let the paint stay on it to dry. So now I'm going to do this blue and it's, I'm going to use the same principle. I'm going to pick between the purple and leave a dot and then I'm going to go all the way opposite, which is here. Trying to keep that line straight. And then I'll do the other part of the cross, which will be here and here. Now, if you were to do something different, you could end up with rays. Once you get the idea of what you're doing here, you're going to have so much fun because the, the variations are endless. There, as a matter of fact, sometimes you'll be painting and you'll have to think about it. You might even have to get up and make a cup of tea or something because you don't know which way you want to go. You don't know what you want to do next because it's all good, but it, it'll all be different. <laughs> <laughs> just making that decision. Okay, so I'm going to wipe this off, but I have to be very careful. I'm rolling it because this is the one that has cotton under it. So I don't want to I don't want to wipe it too hard. Okay. So again, I really like that blue. Actually, because there's so much space, I think I can fit another row in there using the same tool and I'm going to put another row in there because it looks like I can do it without touching. So now you'll see it's going to look like a ring. I'm still going opposite and I'm putting this dot in between the other two. I'm trying to stay close to all the other dots. Now I know if I 
press a little more, I'll get a bigger dot. And if I press a little less, I'll get a little bit of a smaller dot. So if you think that it might not fit, you don't press quite as hard and you can get a smaller dot. Like this one looks a little on the small side. So I'm not going to press as hard because I want to make sure it fits. And you can see it's a little, like this one's out, this one's in. And so I just want you to know it's okay for it not to be perfect. In, when, when we end up with the finished product, you probably won't even notice that. So now we have a ring around. Okay, and then we'll roll this off, but I have to be careful not to take the cotton off. Okay, so now we have this nice blue row. Um, so let's go ahead with the green. Actually, let's stick with the blue. So as you can see, oh, let's, I have even a better idea. Let's put some white. So I'm kind of thinking out loud here. You're probably wishing I would stop talking so you could just get into your Zen mode. <laughs> I'm going to take my toothpick, dip it in the white, and put little dots between these, between each of the blue ones. I'm not as concerned about going north, south, east, west. I'm more concerned with making this look a little bit smoother as a circle because my circle is a little in and out. So, and then there's there's a little hole right there in the rock. That just kind of gave it a little brightness. And I'm using the toothpick and I'm dipping each time so that my dot stays more or less the same size. It just changed it so much and it's still, but you know, it, it's so much, I just think this is so much fun because you just don't really know <laughs> where it's going. All right, so I can use, I could, so I decided I would make my yellow the biggest on this one because it was so bright. So I'm gonna stay smaller with the, with the green. I am going to take my cotton Q-tip and use the end that was all of the cotton still on it. And that's what I'm going to use for the green. So it will be the full size cotton end of the Q-tip. And then I will go back to doing across. Now so isn't that interesting that it's the same size as the blue. So if I dot each one twice then I'll get a little bit more paint. It'll be a little bit bigger but it's okay that it's the same size. But I will go back and do go across from each other and I'm just putting this dot directly over the blue dot. And I'm doing my cross so that I can you know, try to stay on track with looking across. But I only have two here now, so it doesn't really matter which one I pick. And I'm helping that get a little rounder by moving my tool around. So then the one that goes across is this one. As you practice, you'll you'll have you'll be able to predict a little better how big the dot is going to be so that you know how close you should put your tool down. Because like you see this paint spreads out and I, I don't want to touch that blue, but I want to be close to it. So I have to, I have to guess. So here I'll just choose this one. And so the next one is going to, I don't know if it's this one or this one. I doesn't really matter, but I'm just still kind of going across. It looks like it's this one. 
and then I'll just fill all the rest in. And we're, we're looking across, but we're also looking to the spacing that's in between you know, the, the ones on either side. Trying to keep that even. If you notice, I haven't used any rulers. I haven't done any measuring. The measuring is kind of done for you with the tool itself. That's one reason this is so much fun. Traditionally, people have drawn mandalas using rulers and compasses, protractors, all kinds of tools. And But you think about it, nature has all kinds of designs like this, but it doesn't measure. All right, so let's try the little paper clip just because I suggested that you get one and let's see what it does. I'm going to use it to see if I can walk the dots because I think it'll be I think it'll work because it'll all it's so small it'll probably be round. So first thing I'm going to put a dot on the outside of each of these green ones and I'm going to go across again so that I can measure, you know, kind of like if I had a ruler, you know, would it go straight across? And I see I'm not sure, I feel like <laughs> that's right across, but you can't really tell whether or not I'm directly across and that's fine. It's just, I'm just being careful. I'm not trying to be perfect. The most important thing is have fun with it. Don't get too stressed about it. Sometimes I skip one and then I come back and do the others on either side. And I'm just going close to it, but not not touching it, but I am trying to make it be on the outside of all of those. And that looks really fun. It doesn't look much like this one. I was um, walking the dots around that, so just in case, I'm going to take my Q-tip, I mean my toothpick again, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the dots on the side. So I'm going to just one, two, three and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to do all of them on the same side one two three I'm only dotting I mean I'm only dipping for the first dot one two three you might be able to get four you might only be able to get two just don't try to put too many in make sure you have space if you only can put two in that's okay like I could put another one there but I didn't need to, but I could. I'm going to go back to three and just kind of eyeball it so that I just have three because that to me makes more sense than putting the fourth one in. Like this one, I can barely get that last one in. One reason I'm doing all the same ones on one side is because when I come back, I may or may not be able to get two or three dots. I may only be able to get one but I'll have one side being the same all the way around. And this is walking the dots. They're getting smaller each time I touch. And I'm just touching very lightly. It's easier to use this tool and I'm trying to slant it so that you can see what I'm doing. But some of the tools, especially the pencil, anything that gets bigger, you have to go straight or it won't touch. If you were to do the pencil at an angle, it wouldn't touch. You have to go perpendicular. But for a rounded tool, you don't have to do that. Okay, and I think just for good measure, I'll wipe it, and then I'll come back and do the other side, and this is where I'm going to get one or two dots. I'm not going to try to go all the way down. It looks like mostly I will 
be able to get to. And if you, as you notice, I'm almost working upside down. Now here's, I can only fit one. And I can get two there. Here I can only fit one. I'd rather have less dots and not have them touching each other. And this one, so this one, can I get two? Maybe if I touch it lightly and keep them really small. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll see like these two started to touch. I think this, I'll start out a little bit. Sometimes you just don't know. This one looks like a one daughter. And this one also. This one I think I can do too. And this one definitely only one there, but I think I can do two here, but only one here. And so I didn't want very much paint there. Okay, so now we have a, a little fancy row of green. And we're a little bit more than halfway through the lesson. So let's see if we can get done in a, less than an hour. Now you might, when you're painting, you might want to wait a little bit. Wait 10 minutes, 5-10 minutes and let the paint dry because if you make a mistake, you could take a brush, one of your paint brushes, um, like I, I'd like to use a, a small, a small tipped one and get it wet. I usually have water nearby, get it wet and you could wipe off a mistake, the paint. But if it's next to other wet paint, you might start wiping the other wet paint and pretty soon you've got a mess. So, so you might want to wait like this is good, I don't have to worry about anything, I'll let it dry and then I'll come back in with another row. And then I don't worry about messing up the ones I already painted. And some people will use a hair dryer, hold it a little distance away, that'll dry your paint a little faster for you. The small dots dry a lot faster than the fat dots. Now I'm going to use my pencil. And I'm going to, let's see, if make sure you can see. I'm just going to dip it in this yellow paint and like we did at the beginning I have a nice bead. Now I'm, I don't want to squish it down too hard and because I don't want too much paint to come out I want to just leave it so that it makes a nice dot like a drop of paint. And as you can see, I mean you can see this design is different already. And as the paint dries it's probably going to get a little bit flatter but I'm going to make this big dot is going to be my next one and it's going to fit in between it's going my round dot is going to fit in between each of these green ones just in this little space here but it shouldn't be too big I shouldn't have to worry about it touching so we're going to still do this principle where the one over here is going to be pretty much opposite this one. I don't, again, I'm I'm off a little, but you can't tell I'm off, but um, but I can tell. <laughs> so I'm going to very carefully put this down, but my pencil has to be straight up, and I know that the paint is going to come out a little bit. So I'm starting, I'm giving it. You know, you can look down and see where it's going to be but I'm giving it some space so it can spread and not touch the other paint. If it's too far away, then that's okay as long as they're all the same distance away because you can come back in later and put some small dots in there. But if it's too close and it goes over the other paint, you're probably not going to like it. So err on the side of caution and put it a little further away than you think and then just guess See, like that. I didn't push it all the way and it's not as big as it will be when I push it down a little bit more. But I also know that it'll go close but it won't touch. I kind of was guessing and if it, and if you think it's gonna to be too close then just don't push it all the way. Just stop when it comes to the green. It's okay if it's not quite as big as the other ones. And then I'll turn and do this cross again. And then you can see, as careful as I was starting in the middle and making my circle and all of that, 
I have more black here than I do on the sides and I'm going to be getting onto the natural rock a lot sooner than I thought and that's okay. This also isn't even a circular rock, it's an oblong rock, so that's okay also. I really do like painting over the black and onto the natural rock. And if, and if you don't like your dot, if it got too squishy, you can come back and just add a little bit more. And I'm, you know, like I said, I, my rock has some holes in it, so it's sometimes they, the edges aren't real perfect on the circle, but that's okay. And I'm just kind of trying to make these fit with each other even more than going across. They, they have to be even in each, with each other and not touching. And, that's, and so sometimes it's a good idea to skip one and then come back. And you'll find that each time you add another row, any imperfections that you were noticing disappear because you have, oh, okay, so perfect. I have a little mistake. <laughs> so if you have a Q-tip that you haven't used, you can wipe that paint off right away. Just kind of roll it off. And if it doesn't all come off, put it in a little bit of water and then wipe it off. If you can do it right away, that's great. But if that had dripped onto these paints, these are still wet. I would not have been able to wipe it off. So what I would have had to do is wait till it all dried and probably pr either, I probably would have waited for it to dry and then just painted over it, painted some black and painted the dots over. That would probably be the easiest way to fix it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe my pencil and start over with dipping it. And make sure it's not real wet because I don't want it to drip. Okay, so I'm going to come back in and continue with my yellow ones. Now, sometimes yellow is, is uh, not as opaque as the other colors. It looks like it's pretty good this time. Okay, so there, now we have a really bright yellow focus and we're getting close to being finished. I, I'm trying to keep this to an hour, so we really only have 10 minutes. So I'm going to use my pencil again and do the orange. You will have plenty of time to continue to work on your mandala. I'm just going to come right in and nestle it with the orange. And now we're starting to go over the black. And I'm going to do my cross again. Now what I might have done is, you know, I have the paintbrush handles and I have glue sticks and so I might have chosen to do an even bigger dot, but I wanted to show you what you could do with with what I'm pretty sure you have. So, although I'm pretty sure you all have a glue stick. I wouldn't be surprised if you all have, oh, that's really drippy, so I can see that. I almost dripped on the rock again. If You probably have foam brushes. And a, there will be a list of supplies that you can get from the library. Also, if you ever wanted to contact me for parties, if we ever get to meet in person again, which I'm sure we will, I've done birthday parties, I've gone to wine bars and done paint and sip parties, and uh, I teach classes. I was teaching classes at the Las Gatas and Saratoga Recreation Centers, but we haven't been meeting in person, so I haven't been doing that. But I, I love using Zoom and I can teach using Zoom and I do teach ukulele classes using Zoom beginning intermediate and I have I have some students who are ready to perform 
And I belong to an open mic group that performs using Facebook Live every Thursday night. We call it Thursday night. And it, it was based in Saratoga when we were meeting. And the same group often went to Las Gatas and did open mic at the Las Gatas Coffee Roasting Company. I don't know if they're if they have an online group or not. We all manage. We all figure out what we need to do to stay in touch and share our creativity and our love of art, our love of music, a love of each other. We make it work. All right, so I'm going to finish up this row of the orange. It's looking pretty good. Certainly getting the the right look for the rainbow. I think I have time to do a, a row of orange around that. So I'm going to go ahead and take my pencil and just dot around. And one thing to, uh, again, you know go across you want to have it on the outside edge and sometimes I just go around and put all those first dots but I wanted to show you it uh, let's see it is kind of hard to see so I I dotted I did the outside and then I just kept dotting in as far as I could go now to go around back on the other side I'm gonna dot that first dot again and then come back the other direction. And the reason I'm dotting this first one a second time is so that I deposit some paint there so that the second dot next to it is the same size on each side because it's the first dot's the biggest, the second dot's smaller. So when I come back, if I were to start here, this dot would be as big as this one. I don't want it to be as big, so I'll start on this first dot and go around. Then they'll be the same size. And as you can see already, the difference of the orange on the natural rock compared to the orange on the black. It doesn't show up as much on the natural rock as it does on the black, but it's still pretty. And then I dot that first one. I think sometimes people count how many dots are going around but it's more important to have them fit comfortably and not touch each other than it is to have the same number. And you'll also notice that every time you add some detail, then you lose some focus on something else you've already done. So if you find that you've made mistakes, the more little details you put in, the less likely you are to see those mistakes. So my pencil has more paint on it than it did when it was brand new. Uh, even though I wipe it, it doesn't all come off. It leaves a little bit of a little bit of paint on it. So it's become a little bit of a bigger dotting tool than it started out. So if I wanted another one that was a little smaller, I could just sharpen another one. I probably could sharpen this, but with all the paint, I don't want to. So that one already had that first dot, but I'm still going to do it because I want it, the second dot to be the same size. And I can see, but I don't know that you can see, where I, put, I pushed a little too hard on some of these tiny dots. And it actually, if you push too hard, it pulls the paint back off. So you just want a nice light touch. And it's this kind of thing, once you are into your design like this, you start to not even have to think about it anymore. I'm going to wipe my pencil because I feel like it's got a little bit too much paint and the dots are getting bigger and bigger. So I don't want them to get too big. But at this point, I can be watching a movie. I can be listening to an audio book or talking with friends. I can be like on the phone or something, and I can be listening to music, or sometimes 
just uh, some I've taken my paints outside and painted outside because it was so nice just listening to the birds and so I hope that you've enjoyed painting with me today and that you've you know learned something new maybe and I'm I've have watercolor classes here through the library uh, I don't know if I have any I do one stroke painting as well that's a lot of fun but I don't know if I've done a, a class for the library on that one I have done it live but I don't know if I have a recording uh, there is a ukulele series a beginning ukulele series that um, you might be able to sign up for and I will be doing a ukulele class for beginners here in I think it's going to be in two weeks and I think it's going to be tiny bubbles <laughs> so thought it would be a fun one right before Thanksgiving so if you want to learn the ukulele all you need is a ukulele and I can teach you how to play so now we're almost out of time four minutes left so I'm going to use my pencil again because I need the I have to have that row of red that's what's truly going to make it be a rainbow so again I'll, I'll do my dot and then I'm going to turn it around so I can have a line going across a, a imaginary line just to kind of keep them equal but at this point you probably wouldn't be able to tell because there's they're pretty far apart and it, it will be more important that they're in between the orange equally. So I'm just going to kind of do that for reference and then I'll probably just go every other one. And it's getting harder to see what I'm doing because the rock is sloping down on this side and I have to watch and make sure the paint's not dripping down. So this is where you want a paint that's a little bit thicker. And then the, the last thing is that you might consider is when this is all dry is putting a, a smaller dot on top of these dots to lighten the colors a little bit. And that's called a top dot. And what you need to do is pick a tool that's smaller than the one that made the, the first dot so that you have a, a different color showing. And But you have to wait till the paint is good and dry or you'll end up with kind of a mess. But if you wanted if you wanted it like a tie-dye look you could do it when it's wet so I am kind of rushing because I want to get it done and if I press too hard I don't get a nice bead I, I kind of want that single droplet look so there we go with that last one and you can see the red shows up pretty well on the natural rock whereas the blue would might might the blue or the purple might fade but that's okay too it's just a different look and what I can do is show you I just wiped off my tool um, I probably will go and do walk the dots around with the red um, maybe this would be kind of a fun thing to do also is put some white in let's see I'm gonna this gloss white is kind of thick so and I also, I know in the list I had said something about using aqua. So you could put this aqua color in, you could put it on top of the blue. So I'm going to do two things really quickly. I'm going to take the little stick that's the stick end of the, of the Q-tip and I'm going to put white dots right between all of the red ones just a little one and it's interesting how well the white shows up on the rock some people will paint their rocks all black I do that occasionally if the rock itself isn't very pretty or it's too rough and doesn't feel good 
this rock is really pretty and it's smooth and it feels really good so I like to hold it feel the rock itself and I like to see if it's a gray rock or an, a brown or, or tan or orange or this is this one's really modeled it's just beautiful so I feel like I'm enhancing the rock and not obliterating it but if the rock itself is not very pretty and doesn't feel good it's okay <laughs> so that just I mean it just added a little bit of brightness it would be fun to to walk those dots all the way around. One more thing. This would be this would be fun, but this is taking a big risk cuz we did not practice this. I'm going to take this white. Oh, I better not do it. I guess you'll have to tune into another to another rock painting class. But what I was thinking of is making a dot like this with the white or any of the colors and then pulling it down to make a point. And I don't think that pencil is going to work very well, but maybe a Q-tip. Let's see. And again, this paint is thick, so thinner paints are better. You make your dot and then you bring it and make a point or you make a comma. So you'll see artists do this a lot. They make a little comma. And they might they might go around. But this paint is a little on the thick side. I think it would be better probably with the yellow or one of the other colors that I have. Minor, if, if it's too thick, it won't work. So I'm glad I didn't do it because I don't think it would have worked very well. But it's fun to play with. Or this would be really fun to take the eraser and do this dot. That I probably could do, but I think we're out of time. But I will, I will do one quick thing, and I will take my. Well, I'll take my light blue. Where did my light blue paint go? And let's check this one out. I'm going to put a top dot on just to show you what happens if we put a top dot on that's a lot a, a smaller dot I think I think this will look good we'll just put a little bit in there just in the center of each of these and it will brighten it up you'll see how it changes the whole look of it and I'm doing it on this other rock because this paint is dry and this one is not quite dry yet so I don't want to do it if the paint's a little bit wet. This is called a top dot. So when you're all done with yours and it's had a chance to dry you might want to make a, a lighter color whether you mix white into your original color or you have the colors already. I think it looks really nice it really brightened it up so I hope you had fun. It's been really fun for me to be painting with you today. I can't think of too many things I like to do more than sharing my artwork with you all. And I hope you had a lot of fun. And I hope that you post pictures of what you have painted. Post them to the library and they would be happy to put them up. I would be so happy to see what you are able to come up with. If I can be available, I will chime in um, to see if you have questions when they air this next week and um, otherwise you can watch it as many times as you want you can pause the video if you need to in order to get a supply or prepare something and then you can come back you can rewind watch it over and over and uh, have fun so I've really enjoyed painting with you today and I'm Tina Liddy if you want to reach me for uh, your own painting lessons I'm available the library has my email it's twliddy at gmail.com and liddy is spelled l-i-d-d-i-e but again the library has all that information that they can pass on to you I hope to see you soon and I hope that you enjoyed this this fun 
cloudy afternoon with me. All right, take care, everyone. See you next time. Bye-bye.